college football today. How much of an influence do you see from Coach Leach? Yeah, his impact is uh, wide and broad. You know, he traveled all over the country to coach. He went from the bottom right down at Valdosta State to all the way up to Washington State, you know, and, and coached all over the country. And, you know, his impact is, is really felt more in the high school level, I think, because we see what the vision that he had in terms of passing the ball, throwing the ball from his young years with uh, Coach Mummy all the way through now. But you, what you don't see is the trickle-down effect that he's had where we go watch a high school team play and the elements of his offensive system are pervasive. I mean, it's like all over the place. And, um, you know, it changed the game from when years ago it was wishbone, triple option, and you couldn't watch a high school game without wing tee, veer option, triple option, wishbone, to now you actually see more air raid elements than you do those. And uh, he had a large part to do with that and uh, a special man and um, a heartfelt, you know, feelings that went out to his family. His wife and his kids. Uh, <clears throat> Kirby, when will you guys start practicing for this game? And then um, when you do, Ladd and, and Warren McClendon, what, what will their statuses be at that point? Uh, we've been practicing, so I mean, we've not, not, not specifically for Ohio State, we've been practicing um, to maintain standing shape and, uh, and, and making sure our guys uh, are ready sharp physically and ready to do things. So we've kind of been practicing ongoing and, you know, I don't know when exactly we'll get those guys back. I don't know that. They're, they're, they're not practicing with us right now. They're conditioning, they're running, they're moving around, but they're not practicing just yet, but we're still, I guess, 16, 17 days out. Yeah, in a similar vein, an update on Marvin Jones Jr. and Bill Norton. Is he practicing with the team or once you go into portal, you I don't think there's a set standard on that, so that's not really important. We're worried about the guys that, that are getting ready to play. Um, Barbara Jones has been great. He's, he's run, he's conditioned. Uh, he's been doing a ton of uh, conditioning things with us on the side. Probably going to be able to start practicing with us here soon, if not today. I know this uh, time of year is always big for younger players getting practice. Um, has anybody really caught your eye in, in what they've been able to do through the practices to this point? Uh, they all have. They do a great job uh, working. It's, it's great to put them at the forefront and let them get quality reps where they're not necessarily the scout team. They're the, they make up the twos and the threes and sometimes the fours in some positions that get a lot of reps and a lot of growth. And um, you know, this is at the end of the day, almost uh, another set of spring practice. You know, we get 15 practices for a spring practice. We may not get that many in, but we get a lot of practices in once you include walkthroughs. So I've seen these guys have exponential growth and really become good players um, before spring even starts. Kirby, after losing 15 guys to the NFL, at what point this year did you maybe realize that this team was capable of putting together a run like this? And can you just expound a little bit on your decision to not to go into the transfer portal to get help? I think you guys are the only team in the FBS that didn't. Well, we didn't make a decision not to go in. We, 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 we called and recruited several guys um, that fit our criteria. Number one, need. Number two, culture. Number three, we knew something about them out of high school. Um, they've been on our campus, um, but we didn't get any of those guys. So it wasn't a, a, a philosophy. It was more of that's the way it played out. Um, <clears throat> as far as this team, you know, I thought in the spring we had a, we were going to have a good team. Um, we were we were a long way away defensively from where we needed to be during the spring, but I knew we had a good football team. I mean, I knew we had a good football team when the season ended last year because we have a core of good players. You guys obviously have <coughs> some good receivers. I'm curious what your impressions are of Marvin Harrison Jr. watching him and what kind of challenge he presents. All those guys, really good receivers, not just him, across the board. Uh, very talented, probably one of the most talented groups we faced. When you combine it with the talent of the quarterback, it really grows because he has the ability to get the ball to him 
on all parts of the field, vertically, horizontally, side to side. Uh, really good job. I mean, historically, Ohio State's had uh, great wideouts. And that's that's that. When you go to play Ohio State, you you, you know they're going to have uh, really good wideouts. When you go across the NFL, they they produced a lot of really good wideouts, and that's no different than what they have on their roster right now. Coach of uh, Butler Faulkner uh, taking the job at Georgia Tech. Uh, will he still be at all involved in the program leading up to the bowl game? And if not, does Mike Bobo's uh, uh, position or job, whatever you want to call it, kind of get increased a little bit? Um, we're going to determine that probably at a later date. Uh, still in conversation with Buster and, uh, and Brent. It's not something that's pressing right now because he doesn't really even do anything in practice. So we're practicing right now. He's he's a supplement um, to ideas with uh, with Coach Monken, and he can certainly still do that um, from the position he's in, and um, we'll determine that at a later date. Yeah, Kirby, you talked a lot towards the beginning of this year of all those guys that might not have been huge contributors last year stepping up into big roles this year. What has it been like watching the growth from those guys like Pop and Zion, like all those guys that have had to step up this year to get y'all get y'all to where you are now? It's great. I mean, uh, the maturation process, really, Zai was already very mature and a leader before this year. Uh, he's kind of earned it and done it. He's been around here a while. Um, a lot of guys have stepped up to give us an opportunity to be where we are. A lot of coaches have done a fabulous job. You know, we, we took on four new coaches, um, had 13 or whatever it was guys leaving the portal, and we've had a lot of guys step up. We've had a freshman class who a lot of them came in last year at this time, and they have been major contributors. I think we had the third most, fourth most true freshman snaps. Um, so we did a good job of onboarding our incoming freshmen to give us uh, depth behind uh, the guys we had on our team. So um, I think that's a big part of college football right now, how fast you can uh, transition your team each year. Kirby, what uh, offenses have you faced that might be have some of the elements that Ohio State has and what lessons are there for for you and maybe some past games? Uh, I'm not sure who to relate them to. They're, they're different probably than uh, really anybody we've faced uh, maybe in years past, but um, I can't say they're exactly like anybody we've played this year. Kirby, uh, last week Stetson becomes the first Georgia uh, player to be a finalist for Heisman in 30 years. Just as someone who's been around this program for a long time, and especially you being there to see what Stetson has gone through, just what did that accomplishment mean to you to see Stetson get a chance to go to New York? It's a great honor for his uh, resiliency. I mean, to be named one of the four finalists, I don't know anybody could have written a, a, a script with what he's done in terms of start to finish with trials, tribulations, ups and downs, highs and lows um, throughout his career. Um, to have that be near the end of it is, is, is pretty special. You know, it's special for Georgia, it's special for our program, our university, and it's special for Stetson and his family because, you know, he earned it uh, by the way he played on the field. Kirby, you've talked a lot over the years about <clears throat> accelerated schedules in terms of recruiting, and now we, we throw the portal on it, we throw NIL on it, um, it, transfer policies have changed. My question is about retention of players, so maybe a, a scenario could be way off here. Like a guy like Nolan Smith injured, maybe an NIL deal gets put together, or Cedric Van Pran. What can you offer? Can you offer these guys NIL money? Can you offer them insurance policies? And how quickly do you got to determine this? Because you're looking in the portal for needs as well, right? So I guess I'm just kind of wondering about that process and what you can do to maybe make it worthwhile for a guy to come back to improve his draft stock. Complicated question. Um, I really don't know, honestly, how to answer it. And um, it's not like pressing need. I mean, we have a process that we follow. so. Our process is step by step. I mean, if there's a day in the month of each calendar month that I go through and say, okay, it's time to do this. 
It's time to have this conversation. It's time to gather this information. It's time to educate our players on this in this process. And I think communication is the key on that. I mean, you reference Nolan. I mean, I, I'm confused because Nolan's kind of done. You know, he's, he's through playing. Now, if you're talking about this time last year, um, sure, we have conversations with every player that has eligibility remaining. And I think you're juggling a spreadsheet that, that, that I keep, we keep, that has what each guy's doing and where their eligibility is. And over here, where each guy potentially could come in. And you're trying to match you know, inflow and outflow. Uh, it's essentially what you're trying to do. But um, NIL is a part of that, but NIL is not, you know, it may be dangled as a carrot at some places, but really it's about do you want to be part of this team? Do you want to grow and get better? Uh, do you want a chance to do what Devontae White did? Do you want a chance to do what Chris Smith did? Do you want to have a chance to do what Jordan Davis did? Do you want to have a chance to do what Quay Walker did? So, like, there's great opportunities to move from a late round draft pick with your grade to an early round draft pick. And um, that's not really what I'm concerned with right now. I'm, I'm concerned with making sure our football team is developing at all stages and phases. Because we have guys that are in the stage of, man, he's going to have to start next year. He really needs to get ready. And then there's the guy, the phases is offense, defense, special teams. You know, how are we improving? That, that's my focus. It's not on, really not on NIL, not on portal, not on those things, because the focus is on our team. Okay, thank you, Coach. Thank we're going to take a quick photo, and then uh, we're going to.